Hi and welcome, my name is Nicola and we're about to get really creative. Hi guys, today we are going to create 11 different things with our Tombow dual brush pens. They are really easy to find and they do do, they definitely, I said do do, um, they definitely take some practice to use and it's not something you're going to pick up right away because the tip is very long and people get a little bit nervous about how much pressure they can put on it. Now the reason I've redone this video from the original video we did is it seems as though the original video we did is extremely popular. So I decided to do an updated version considering that the first video that I did was probably the first video I ever did. So the sound quality is terrible. Everything is just a mess. The editing is a mess. It is just precious. So I've linked it below if you do want to watch it. Um, essentially, this is the updated uh, 2019 version. Um, so please feel free to obviously comment below <laughs> if this or these are some of the techniques you've used in the past. Would love to see how you use your Tombos. And if you have any other ideas, send them through because I'd love to collect a couple more and try some new ideas with my Tombos. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need today is a notebook, our Tombow pens. We're also going to need a spare piece of plastic, a little piece of paper to dab on, and I'm also going to use a small piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to use an aqua brush, and I'm also going to use a mister. With all of these things, we're going to do 11 different techniques with our Tombow pens. I'm also going to use my blending palette and this little color directive thing from Tombow. Now, I'm going to open up my book through to a blank page and I'm going to get my Tombows ready. They're already in one of these very cool little boxes and I love how the box opens and expands to fit your working environment. So let's have a look at the paper and the notebook first. You're going to need something that is over 120 GSM or even over 100 GSM paper. It needs to be thick and it needs to not bleed on the other side. Tombos, if you use quite a lot of them, or if you use heavy water, are notorious for bleeding through thinner paper. So let's have a look here. I'm going to do a quick pen test on my paper. Here I'm using the Le Mom 120 GSM paper to create all our crafts and arts today. You can see I've gone quite heavy with the ink and there's quite a bit of ghosting on the other side but it hasn't bled through yet. Let's zoom in and see if we can make it a little bit more bleedy by adding a couple of extra layers over the top. You can see as close up that it does have quite a strong ghosting um, capacity through the paper. Now I'm going to use an extra Tombow and we're going to see if we can make it extra bleedy on the other side. This is why it's really important to choose a thicker paper. If we turn it over now, you can see it's starting to get really bleedy, but it's only still ghosting. Perfect, let's get started. Right, for our first technique, I'm going to use two different colored pens. I'm gonna choose pens that really work well together. They don't need to be corresponding colors. They don't need to be coordinating colors. They just need to work really well together. So here I'm going to use pink and I'm gonna scribble it all over my blending palette. I'm then gonna use the blue and I'm gonna lift the pink pigment up off the blending palette with my blue pen. When I write, you'll see that there's almost an ombre effect to the blended words. Another way to do this is to use a watercolor ink or something that is a water-based ink. Here I'm just using some of the pigment from the lid of the watercolor ink and I'm going to also make that ombre effect. It's really simple and it's a great way to add some dynamic colors to your bullet journal. On to one of my favorite techniques, smushing. 
I absolutely love smushing. All you need to do is use your piece of plastic and draw on it with your Tombow pens. You then spritz over it with your mister and flop it straight onto the page and smush, 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 smush it into the page. You don't want to use too much water because this will definitely bleed through. The only paper that this does not bleed through is on the Archer and Olive notebook. When it's dry, add some wording and you've got a beautiful background for an easy peasy quote. Would help if I knew how to spell magic. Now you can see here that there's been quite a bit of bleed through from the paper. Really simple, just stick the pages together and you can then use the other side for some heavy watercolour too. Here we're going to add some colour to some really simple font. It's not a very difficult font to draw, I'm just adding an extra thick line to the one side of the font. As we go through, we're going to fill it up with some colours that we have selected. I'm choosing purple, pink and blue. On the last one, the letter C, I'm not going to fill it in at the moment and I'm going to blend them in three different ways. Once I've got all my colours ready, we're ready to blend with the blender brush in the first one. This, you will notice, sometimes blends and sometimes actually peels up a bit of your paper, so just be aware of that. For the second one, we're blending it with a very small watercolour brush. And then for the last one, for the letter C, we're actually going to paint the colours in from the blending palette into the letter C. For our bubble letters, draw them in the shape that you need. So for A, make a big fat A, big fat B and a big fat C. You use your colours again, this time as watercolour, to fill in the shapes that you've just created. Once you're done, grab a nice thick, probably 0.9 tip black pen and go around the border and create a really lovely thick border so that you can see the shape of your new letters. Once done, grab a grey Tombow and give it some shadowing. Once you've given it some shadowing, go over it again with a little bit of white to highlight just the edges and you'll have a really fun and creative lettering technique for your bullet journal. Alright, we're on to number five and again we're going to just work on the technique we've already learned. This time we're going to use it on the edge of the paper and we're going to blend it a little with the watercolour brush. Once we've smushed it in and dried it up, we're going to add Monday to it and you can do this again and again throughout the page for the rest of the days of the week. All right, this is really a simple part that we can get to. Letter in a word and then use a thin black pen to go over all of the borders. Once you're done, again, highlight and add a couple of shadows. Number seven, this time we're going to add some stippling or stipling. I'm not sure how you say it. But we're going to add a really lovely base colour and then we're going to go over it with a darker purple. We're going to use the thin tip of the dual brush pens and that's what really gives it a really fun feel is that you've got a thin tip and a thick tip on one pen. Now for the last part we're just going to use a little bit of the pink pigment and we're actually just going to paint on the words. This shows you the kind of dynamic and ability for you to use this in a number of different ways. Now on to headers. We're going to make a rainbow header section for our weekly spread for a bullet journal. Obviously we're just going to stick with Roy G. Biv and we're going to paint them to the top of the page. Once done, I'm going to use my other Tombow pen just to write in notes across the top so that I know where my notes are going to go for the rest of the week. Really, I'm doing this so that I can wait for my headers to dry. 
I'm now going to add strong rainbow colors all the way across the page. I don't need a ruler and I sure as heck don't need a whole bunch of other stuff. All I need is my Tombow and some pens. I'm then going to use the same color to do the header over the um, headers we painted earlier. Obviously red on red, orange on orange, yellow on yellow, etc. It gives it a really nice dark color. Again using the techniques we learned earlier, I'm now going to write the word priorities in our rainbow theme. Once I'm done, I'm going to take my very, very tiny little thin watercolor brush and I'm going to go over it so that the colors blend together beautifully. One of the things I love about my Tombow dual brush pens is that they look beautiful on watercolor paper. Here I'm using a small piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to write to-do list on it. Then I'm going to blend it with my small watercolor brush to give it that watercolor feel and effect. I'm now going to cut this out and I'm going to create a little background on my weekly spread to be able to stick this over onto it. I'm going to use the colors I've already used to create my little background. And when I'm done, I'm going to stick it down. Our very last technique again is very simple. This time we're just going to use the rainbow colors to add a rainbow shadow to a black word. This looks, it gives it a really fun effect and it really looks beautiful. And that's all for our 11 techniques. It would be great if you could stick around for more videos. Please do hit the subscribe button and you can find us at myinnercreative.com. We're also all over Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest. We'll see you soon.